What's up guys? Jules, it's time for another stitch along. Stitch along, stitch along. I'm just kind of preparing uh, a couple of extra needles in anticipation of attempting to get even more done on uh, Ronnie Rowe here. So we're going to make that final push in the next couple of weeks to get this finished. It's going to be awesome. So I just thought it would be a great candidate to do today. Today. Today, today, today. You can see I got, I got some kind of a stain down there. Not sure what that came from. Alrighty. I've got a little bit on this today, so I've got I have made a little bit of progress since the update video. So we're just gonna get all shit here. Whew. Let's see here. Two, three. Anyway, I did have a finish though, guys. If you haven't checked out the blog, you might want to do so. It basically talks about, or it shows a picture of the Dog's Drool um, project. Oops, let's get this in a little bit better, eh? eh? I'm doing this uh, video a little bit more in the, um, a little later in the afternoon than I normally do any of these videos. I try to do them in the morning because that's when the light is sort of the best for this area. But, sorry guys, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what's like the best spot for you. Uh oh, tangle, tangle. But anyway, so to go back for just a sec, ah, I just got to, oh, what did I do? I brought that piece in. What the, oh, that was a random piece. Holy cow. It's like I'm doing magic tricks here or something. But uh, I finished the dog's drool piece yesterday, Thursday. I can't remember exactly what day it was. Um, but got that done. Made the big push at the end. It didn't take too long to get that part finished. So, um, so I was pretty happy about that. My husband's really happy about that. So we're going to definitely go and get that framed but he wants me to finish um a couple more projects before we go and do like a big group framing so that would be the goal for say like an e, e pluribus unum as well as this ronnie row so that's going to be the goal le goal goal so anyway Let's see here. What else is going on? So, the bees may be making a bit of a comeback, which we always count them out, and then they come back, and then we're like, well, of course they would have been pretty awesome. Um, the ones that, um, the good, the hives that are good are producing honey at a faster rate than they have been which is probably because they sense the onset of fall and they know they need to kind of, it's just sort of instinctual that they need to put away as much food as possible. Um, so the good news is, is that they have already like provided a ton of honey, but they haven't capped it yet. And they will cap it when they're done with preparing it. Um, they cap it to store it. And capping it is what allows us to be able to take it. And so... We will, uh, we will hope that we will be still able to get some honey, hopefully, in the very near future. But my husband is very excited about, um, he's actually uh, getting really excited about the filming and um, he's using this little, his, I say little GoPro, it's really an awesome little GoPro, but it's, uh, he puts it like he'll either wear it or he'll put it like right on a different part of a hive and the quality of the video is so good that you can just hone right in and it'll you know and it and it gives a remarkable picture so we're pretty happy about that ah get right there get right there But so anyway, so bees are doing well. Cat's doing pretty dang good. 
Dogs are crazy, as usual, per the norm. I actually moved to start stitching like right in front of my computer now that we've got our new, um, not new, but our, it's a new setup, um, our area where we kind of set everything. Um, I have like a corner computer desk now, so it gives me a lot more privacy. The dogs aren't trying to jump up on me all the time. Um, downside is that it's not as comfortable as stitching in my little lazy boy. So I'm probably going to convert back to the lazy boy for um, tonight and tomorrow. Uh, it's because I, it's, it's also, it's easier to stitch at the desk when it's a smaller project. When it's like a, um, you know, like, well, Ronnie Rowe works pretty well, but also just like E Pluribus Unum and and whatnot in the dachshund piece they they work really well in that regard when you're you know kind of have a small space to work with but it doesn't really work very well for the bigger pieces just because um it's a little harder to tuck the material away from myself and it just slows me down a bit so hopefully the dogs will be amenable to letting me stitch more over there so So the um, so my family is um, coming in town. Well, not family, but my well, yes, family. Um, <laughs> my uh, aunt and uncle that have been up um, in the mountains and Estes Park and whatnot for the summer. Spent the whole summer up there. We went up a couple different times, um, and they came down a couple different times. And uh, but they are wrapping things up for the summer, and they are heading back east. Uh, back to their home and um, so they'll be coming through here middle of the week to say goodbye and uh, it's been quite the summer for them they definitely um, had a very Colorado summer you know very different summer for what they normally do so good for them you know I hope that you know someday we can do something like that Although I got to say that my uh, my husband and I we we've been scouting, but what where we scout is we scout like obscure small towns in like northern Idaho and Washington. <laughs> we you know we'd like to be more by ourselves, but we have to have internet. I think you guys understand. Some of you guys probably understand that. I mean I I don't need TV, but I I absolutely need a good high speed internet connection. So. Um, hopefully by the time we are ready to retire, that is a reality no matter where you live. And that would be absolutely amazing. That's what we're hoping for. So we shall see. We were looking in some, uh, different places. Uh, there's this, uh, cool area. Well, not cool area. I have no idea if it's cool or not. What did I do with my skeezers? There they are. And uh, there's this town in, I want to say, eastern Washington, I think. I'm pretty sure that's where it's at. And it was spelled like W-A-U-C-O-N-D-A. And we were laughing because we were like, we could move to Wakanda. And uh, <laughs> that would be awesome. And uh, But I'm sure, like, you know, that joke's been made a million times for the people who actually live there but you know that's definitely something that we look at we look for we'd love to have a little bit of land be able to have a bigger a big garden you know room for a bunch of dogs and cats if um, if that's what we decide to continue to do but that's just uh, that's just kind of you know what we're looking for but who knows, we may end up just staying here in Colorado for forever. It is pretty nice. It's actually like, what was it? It's like 72, 74 degrees today at its highest. And tomorrow it's going to be even cooler, windy. We had some rain this morning, which was nice. So it's definitely fall at this point, which is awesome. Oh, I need to put in. Oh, I almost forgot. I gotta put this in here. So Friday, 
Friday night, actually, I have um, a whole thing coming up. I got, I'm got i going to the Dave Matthews Band concert. I am a Dave Matthews fan from the early 90s, and I'm looking forward to the show. I haven't seen them in... Gosh, I'm trying to think of the last time I saw them a concert. Like, the whole band, it has probably been at least five, six years minimum. They haven't, um, they do a, a music festival in Denver where they play, like, in the summer for, like, you know, a Sunday night kind of thing at a music festival. And uh, I'm not a music festival kind of person. So, um, so we, uh, so I haven't, you know, been to there. Now, I, I, Dave Matthews himself came along and did like an acoustic tour with another guy um, some years ago, and I got great seats for that, and that was awesome. Um, seeing him at Red Rocks, um, which was probably the best venue I've ever seen him at. And then, yeah, so I'm I'm excited, even though I'm not really a big fan of the the new album. I need to kind of listen to it a bit more, but uh, it's not. Every album they've ever put out, I've been real, like, just jazzed about the music and the lyrics and just all these different things. And honestly, the, I don't know, this this latest to come out is, I don't know, my, if I turned into an old fuddy-duddy that I don't understand the music anymore, I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. So I think I'm literally just going to go row by row by row by row all the way across at this point. Um, it's definitely the easiest way to do it. Well, I shouldn't say the easiest, but I think it's the way that we'll be able to be seen the best. So, so I tried a new strategy this week, although I'm, I can't say that it necessarily was a strategy when I first did it, but after my, my weekly update video, I just left every project that I went over up here, and then I just pulled a few down at a time to work on them. And that way I knew for sure like what I have worked on and what I haven't worked on. So... I'm hoping that will help me kind of keep things a bit more straight and so that I make sure that I work on everything every week. That would be the goal. Le goal. My husband's downstairs watching Avengers again, and all the little, um, not little, but all the um, bonus features and everything that comes with it. We, we both are big fans of bonus features. It is pretty sweet. Our next movie that we're looking forward to coming out, um, as far as on like DVD, is Solo. We've already pre-ordered it. this thing I really am I'm just I just I can't believe we're reaching a point where we're getting some finishes in here after all this time I'm pretty happy pretty dang happy about it do 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 do, do, do. We went to uh, this new 
not new. I mean, it, I don't know how long it's been there. We just didn't know it was there. Um, smoking, smoker, and like smoking meats um, store, which was really cool. I mean, it's very niche. You know, it's it's just smoking stuff. So it's got like, you know, 15 different kinds of wood chips, maybe 20. Um, all the different accessories and stuff. But the thing that I was most excited about was all the... Um, hot sauces. They had so many sauces. Oh, barbecue sauces and like hot spicy sauces. And so we went by there the other day and picked up I think three or four different kinds and a new and a new rub. So I think my husband's going to do a pork shoulder this weekend, which would be amazing. I, I think the pork shoulder was my favorite. I, I, and I think a lot of it had to do with this, just like the rub and the seasoning that he put on it, you know, in advance. Um, I think that, to me, seems like that was probably the tastiest part. Because I would eat some of that without even having any kind of sauce on it. But, yum, 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 yum. Alright, there's another row. On the runny row. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to re-thread the needle so we can do a zimor. Here we go. I still need to come up with a better setup for my stitch with these. But we're getting there, kids. We're getting there. Your constant feedback helps me hone in on the best things that I can do. Hot diggity dog. I just folded that page in half. That was page four of four pages on this. I fold it in half, so I'm on the last half of the last page. Hooray! So, let's talk about this for a sec. I had an idea, but I don't know how well it's going to work. Um, and it's for you guys, so if you don't think that's a good idea, or if you have ideas, uh, suggestions, let me know. So what the plan is, is... Um, uh, I thought about doing a little, well, no, it's not going to be a little series. It'd be a big series, video series, of taking a project and doing it from beginning to end. You know, like, I might even, like, um, you know, do the whole, like, where I'm picking out the fabric and, um, you know, getting that taken care of and just, you know, all the things that, that I need to do for it. And, um... I'm just going to go ahead and cheat and put that. I'm not cheating. There's no there's no cheating in cross stitch. Um, so, you know, like if it's, and it'd have to be a smaller piece because the goal would basically be to do everything on video. So I don't think there's any way that it would be efficient or a good use of anyone's time for me to record the hundreds of hours of video that it takes for me to do most of the projects. So... I have to pick something smaller, um, potentially one of the ones that I already have from like my big toe would be, um, would be good for that. But, or even the, the honeybee, um, the little man, little woman honeybee farm, um, cause that one requires a bunch of different stitches. Um, that might be something to, um, you know, to, to, to do as a series, but what, I mean, what do you guys think? Is that something that you would be, you know, would want to watch? I mean, it's, it would be very similar to the, uh, these videos that I'm doing like this, but I would do that in addition to the two normal weekly ones that I do. Um, I would not change, um, that at all. And I would not do whatever project I'm doing, you know, for the the big, you know, the, the, that new series, I would not do that in my stitch along. Um, that's not how I would do that. So, I don't know. Let me know. What do you think? I could always get something new as well. I haven't really spent a lot of time looking. I'd love to figure out exactly how 
Like, you know how some people can, like, do the, like, a video capture where they can be looking at something online and you can see what they're looking at? I'd love to do a video where I go to, like, all the different sites that I normally get um, stuff from. Or even just go to, you know, new sites that you guys suggest and go check a look and you guys can see what I think, you know, in sort of live as I, as I look at it. Man, you are a tangling piece of thread today. So, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm trying to figure out some new ideas. You know, something different. I'm enjoying all this stuff. What am I doing? But what am I doing? Okay, here we go. Um, you know, I'm really enjoying the channel and the videos and all this. Except for the fact that I keep... <laughs> I keep having problems. It's this one particular thing of floss. It does not want to go in. It's being stubborn. It does not want to go in here. Silly, silly thing. Let's see. All right, hold on. Four, one, two, three. Anyway, just let me know. Let me know. In other news, um, not news, but yeah, my husband finds the coolest things to watch on YouTube. It's weird what his YouTube, you know, searching kind of takes him from one area to the next until he finds these these great videos that I've never seen or, you know, or haven't seen in forever. And one in particular that we were looking at was um, the funeral of Muhammad Ali from, I don't know, at least a few years ago. And it was, Billy Crystal was giving the eulogy. And I, I think it was just part, I think multiple people got up and talked. But, uh, I did not know that they were very close friends for, I don't know, 20 years or something like that, maybe longer, um, since before Billy Crystal became a household name. Uh, one of his first breaks was to um, do a, a TV bit about Muhammad Ali, and it was back when he was you know, he was doing a lot of imitations and he was doing a Ali imitation and Cosell, Howard Cosell imitation. And it, it was very, very interesting. Um, it was funny too, very poignant, but it was just, it was really cool just hearing a different side of, you know, Muhammad Ali. I mean, everything that I've ever read about the guy was, was, you know, he's quite amazing. And, um, I definitely, I just didn't know very much about, you know, a lot of times all you hear is just the, um, you know, it's just the sports aspect of it, but he was a heck of a guy, and um, all you gotta do is just kind of like YouTube, or YouTube, you just Google like Billy Crystal and Muhammad Ali, and it, you know, should have quite a lot of stuff there for you. I don't do that as much. I like to watch, um, lately I've been watching a lot more, um, different people doing CrossFit. Oh, if I was 20 years younger, I'd be doing CrossFit. But my body, my body is wrecked. My body's not wrecked, but my body is beaten up. And I have to go very slow with, um, well, I shouldn't even say it like that. It's, I... Basically, when I do physical activity things, I have to be mindful of how hard I push myself. Because my brain, my heart, and my, um, my brain and my heart plus or against my body are like two different things. Like, I always push myself way too hard. And it's not like I push myself. It's just this is what I want to do. I want to push myself. I want to test my limits. And I always have. Um, but it kind of... Um, 
I don't want to say backfired, but I guess in a way you could say that, just with having a couple neck fusions and all the resultant um, issues I've had with that. But, um, you know, I, I mean, there's nothing. I, I would love to jump right into CrossFit, and I don't necessarily want to do some of those crazy things that they do with the, um, I don't know, things that I think that might cause problems for me. I'm just going to take this and tie this one off. Ah, speaking of somebody stabbing, somebody stabbing my, uh, my, uh, what do they call those dolls? The little hex dolls or whatever? Like every time I get like a little sharp pain somewhere, I'm like, ah, oh, somebody's stabbing my doll. But anyway, so, oh man, I just, you know, the thing that I love about it is the competition both within like myself and against everybody else, like, but in my age group. So it's not like I'm a professional or anything, but all people across the country and the world, um, that would be, let me highlight, let me highlight what I'm talking. Um, it, it, that's the thing about CrossFit that I, I think I would have gotten obsessed with because you, you do different workouts and you have people basically like judging your, your actions as far as, okay, that was a proper exercise that counts. That was a good rep that counts. And then it, based upon the, um, the workout that they give you, and then your performance in that workout, you get like so many points and whatnot, and then you can, you're ranked. And I just find that, I mean, I, honest to God, if this was, if I had a, my body was 20 years younger, I would be so into CrossFit because it is so many different things that, you know, with the flexibility and then the strength and, oh man, it'd be so cool. But knowing me, I would jump into it now and cause all kinds of issues. So I'm just taking it really slow. But there we go. Hold on just a second here. In case you couldn't tell, I just switched over to another part of the video. But anyway, so ah, uh, but so I watch I watch all these younger whippersnappers whippersnappers uh doing the crossfit and everything and i just i just enjoy it it's you know a lot of them are very positive and a lot of fun um i watch and, and you know the thing that i really appreciate cross about crossfit is the fact that the women are celebrated just as much as the men are in this in this competition which you know name me a a sport out there in which that is the case you know anywhere where you you know you st you still I mean maybe maybe soccer maybe national soccer, but where you have like um, people who say you know what the women's competition is just as impressive and thrilling as the men's, and because the women are like just ridiculous. I mean now I don't doubt that. Some of them, and I don't know how many, but some of them absolutely are on some sort of performance enhancing drugs. And some of them did get busted um, before, prior to the national or the, to the world games that they just had, world championships. Um, and the women were all taking, um, you know, like, uh, I, don't, I don't think it was testosterone. It was basically like an anabolic steroid and, you know, to build muscle and whatnot. Um, and I'm like, I'm sorry, there's no... Uh, there's no defending. You can't say, oh, I, I tripped and fell into a tub of anabolic steroid. I mean, when, you know, if a woman was taking something that would help her maybe cardiovascularly, cardiovascularly, uh, that's a hard word to say, um, then you might be able to, you know, to say, okay, well, maybe that was, you know, tampered or tainted or whatever, something, you know, that she took. But, um, when it fits with what a person needs to do better in a competition, when that drug that they're busted for fits that, then you're like, all right, come on. You know, the reasonable doubt does not exist in this case. So, but anyway, so the group that I follow, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the vlog, but I think it's just Team Richie. Um, Team R I C H E Y. And the the, the two, the, I want to say kids, which is showing you how old I feel, 
um, the two kids that do the videos um, are just absolutely adorable and they work hard and they're just good people and the cool thing is is they've been doing these uh, like they've been touring around a lot of different places and they came to their English and when they were here for the CrossFit Games um, last week, they visited other folks that were here. And they were, like, in Kansas for a while. And, you know, they're just, they're, you know, they're good people that are positive and they work hard. Uh, and I love that. And the thing is, is that, I, like I said, I'm, I love sports. And I've always, unfortunately, had a bit of a bias against women athletes. Uh, you know, and, and as as a woman athlete, I understood I'm slower. I can't jump as as you know high. I'm not as fast. You know all these different things, and so I never really like would watch. You know, I just didn't care about watching a woman do sports for the most part because it wasn't as impressive to me as watching the guys most of the time. But even I mean, and again, it goes back to CrossFit watching women like actually lift these weights and push themselves and seeing the kind of like physiques that they can build from that is so impressive. And I have to say that I actually watched the vlog more for the woman in the, um, that helps run the organization rather than the guy. And that's unusual for me, but she's adorable and she loves dogs. And so I'm like, yeah, I could, that could be me 20 years ago, but Anyway, I, I adore those guys. I love watching them. There's like a whole two years of video backlog that I'm still trying to catch up on. But but I uh, definitely I definitely enjoy that. There was this um, thing that came out this past week in the land of video games. And um, it's not so much that you have to understand. You don't have to understand video games to, uh, you know, to hear this story. But um, there was a, a guy, well, let's just say this. There's a video game that came out recently. And a lot of different people did reviews on it. And some of those reviews were... In print form and some of them were video form and um, so this one guy from this big huge video game I'm highlighting video game um, like organization uh, like news reporting organization um, was you know did a review and another guy on the internet that has a that has a much smaller following was like, I guess, you know, it probably popped up, you know, in his, hey, maybe you want to check out this guy's review of the game that you reviewed. And he watched it, and the guy basically used, it wasn't word for word, but it was like paragraph by paragraph what what he talked about. And the guy just rearranged some word structure and threw in a couple different words here and there. But the vast majority of the professional guy's review was a direct copy. I mean, the guy plagiarized. So um, the amateur guy basically was like, well, what do I do? And he put out a video and said, hey, this guy plagiarized my video. Take a look and see what you think. And he put like side-by-side -side comparisons and stuff. And it's like, yeah, it looks pretty concrete. And it very quickly kind of blew up. And the... Um, professional writer guy ended up getting suspended and then very quickly got fired from his news organization and everybody was like oh man this is terrible and you know it's it's uh it's one of those things where video game quote-unquote journalism has been you know there have been some issues like this in recent years where people I mean I don't know why people think that you can plagiarize things off the internet because the internet knows the internet can find out these things. Um, so after a couple of days of laying low, fired professional writer guy who plagiarized came out with a video on his old YouTube channel. And in it, he acted kind of ridiculously like, like he was the victim in all this, you know? And he was just like, I take full responsibility for the review that was put out there. 
But he never says that was him. He never says, I'm sorry to the guy that I plagiarized from. Um, he just, you know, he kind of came around and you know, sort of blaming the video game industry. He goes, I've seen other people do this, you know, exact same style and just all these different things. And, and then he went after another video game journalist that had heavily criticized him and said, hey man, uh, you seem to think that I probably, like this is something I do all the time. Well, you know what? I don't. And I challenge you to find uh, any kind of uh, evidence that would support the fact that you think that I cheat all the time. So <laughs> on Twitter, the guy was like, the other guy, the prof other brother professional guy was like, all right, let's do it. And then he literally started pulling out old video after old video and then comparing it to um, finding source material and that the guy had literally plagiarized different sections of different reviews on, on other games. And, um, and within another day or two, basically, there was a whole slew, like, literally, it looked like this guy had basically plagiarized more than he had ever, like, far more than he had, whoops, ah, you didn't see that, you didn't see that, you did not see that, these are not the droids you're looking for, that was not the chart you were looking for, oh, mistakes, but, um, Anyway, and the guy really should have just shut his mouth and just gone away because the fact that he created a video that, I mean, everybody in the video game journalism world was railing at this guy after his video. And he did take it down after just even a couple of hours because it was so, like, people were so mad at him because he was so slimy on the video. Um, and... If he had just kind of not said anything and just let it die, it probably would have been a lot better for him because now what's happened is he's pretty much like his name is mud in the journalism, in any kind of journalism aspect. Like he'll never be able to work in video games or anything like that ever again um, because, I mean, it's – there was one <laughs> – there was one um, review that he wrote that somebody found a blog post on a forum that – somebody had put out there that had that he literally lifted word for word and and it's it was just it was just it's mind-boggling you know you have to be a certain level of arrogant to think that you can steal things on the internet and not ever be found out about it just doesn't work like that there are too many programs nowadays that can track down you know they're like anti-plagiarism tools that can track those things down. But that was a little bit of um, craziness that happened in our world. Happened in my world, something I was paying attention to. The other thing that I've been paying attention to is just the whole drama with Elon Musk and Tesla. I am I'm a big fan of Elon Musk in terms of his vision, his ideas, um, his drive. Uh, I'm not a fan of some of the things he's been doing lately with Tesla in terms of just the things he's come out and said and done. And um, I don't think that for him, he doesn't need to be the guy, like the number one guy in charge making cars. He's not a car maker. You know, there are people that are visionary and that that push things forward and they need to hand it off to somebody else at some point to enact that vision in, in best and most efficient way. And I'm not saying he's not, he's, I still think he's doing a pretty good job. It's just, obviously it's, it's really stressful for him. And, um, you know, you wonder if, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen with Tesla. I, I am. I love SpaceX. I love the Boring Company. The Boring Company is the um, subset of. It's a sub company of Tesla, sort of. That basically is. Um, they're they're trying to develop a lower cost tunnel boring um, thing, basically that can help with, um, speeding transportation, mass transportation. Um, like they're building the hyperloop or they're trying to build the hyperloop in California. 
um, where you could get from like Los Angeles to San Francisco in like, I don't know, an hour or something ridiculous. Um, they're building one. Uh, I th you know, I need to go back and see for sure. I thought they had won a contract to build one from like Washington to New York or maybe Boston, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, something like that. But they've been winning some contracts to try to kind of create some different um, transportation projects. And uh, so I really like that. I like the solar farms and the solar company that he has there. Um, they have been doing a lot in the sense of, I, I think that probably, honestly, like the best thing they have going for them is their battery um, technology at Tesla. Because I think, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think that the efficiency and the capabilities of their batteries far outstrip anybody else's out there. So like it's, you know, their, their solar farms are just that much more efficient than anybody else. Australia has been using a lot of their solar farms, you know, because with, and if I've got any Australians out here, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, of course, but, uh, you know, Australia has been suffering from a lot of, um, weather-related issues, um, heat waves and things like that, where, um, you know, Australia itself is a large country, and outside of the major cities, everybody, ah, didn't do that right. Okay, I'm just going to do it this way. I'm not going to go back and try and, and push that through. You know, I'm not going to try and pull it back out here. It's probably just not going to work, but when I come back and cover that, it, it'll be covered, so I don't have to be perfect about that. Uh, but... So, but it's an ideal place for solar because they get so much sun. And um, there are different cities that have asked um, Tesla to, like, create, you know, a solar farm for them. And I know the one that they put in last year that um, there was a whole thing about, you know, how long would it take him to get it done? And Musk was like, oh, we can do it in three months or something ridiculous. And then they got it done. Of course, they had actually already started the process before they made the bet. But um, I don't care. It still was amazing. And I think in that city where they put the um, the big, the, their first big farm in Australia, I want to say that I saw recently that they had cut energy costs by like 90% without um, having any blackout issues and, and whatnot. Um, a lot of it comes from the Tesla Powerwall that, um, uh, that they, that Tesla has created. And it's a battery, it's a home storage, home energy storage unit that, um, you can get, and some people use it. I mean, well, most people I think would use it in conjunction with a, a Tesla car to help charge said Tesla car. And I'm just looking at this. And because um, you can charge off the power, and the power wall basically will pull its power from, say, like solar panels on your roof. And it goes down, and you can use the solar power for you know your normal electricity needs throughout the day. And then at night, when... Um, um, like if, so you can use so much of it and then it'll store, it'll keep like the battery stored up. So at night you can use even more of the energy from the power wall if you choose to. And so in places like Australia, that's actually been quite seemingly quite effective. So there are other cities now that are coming out being like, Hey, we want one of those, you know, solar areas as well. And so, you know, there's definitely a, um, you know, the future is coming with solar. I, I also just read an art, um, an article earlier today about Egypt is putting together the largest um, uh, solar farm in the world. They're in the process of creating one in the desert that is um, that contains five million panels, and you know they, they you know for them that would be incredibly like if you just use it to even honestly if you're just trying to. Um, if all you do is try to provide power to Cairo and its suburbs, that's huge. Um, it gets everybody off of oil, you know, reduces the fossil fuel need, you know, needed, needed, neededness. That's a new word, neededness. And, uh, but it's pretty cool.
pretty cool. I'm a big fan. I love wind turbines. Oh my gosh, I love wind turbines. We've looked at getting something on our roof. Um, we don't have a very big roof, and the problem is, is that right now where we live, it's kind of a co-op um, energy group, and they haven't really gotten on board with the whole, hey, put a solar panel and sell your electricity back to the grid. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, they're not really doing that yet. Uh, we would be all over that if that was the case. I, I had a f good friend of mine that lived further up north, and he did that, which is ironic considering that I was the one who originally was like, ah, you should use this and that, and he was sort of reticent about it at first, but then he came around to it, and they installed, I think, maybe three or four panels at a time when they could get the, the what do you call it, the rebate, the solar rebate or whatever, and because um, I don't think it's still in effect, but um, and and they used they had a large house and it was um, you know it was hard to keep cool in the summer and it was hard to heat in the winter, and so they put in the. Uh, they put in that whole system. They did not use a power wall. They just, you know, used what they could and then they sold the rest back. And he saved, I, I want to say he saved like $100 a month in energy cost, I think. Pretty sure that's what it was. Of course, then they've just recently moved. And so now he doesn't have solar in his new place. Uh, but the people who moved in were all excited about getting a place that already had solar panels and everything. So that was, that's pretty cool. But I, you know, I just think it's pretty amazing, and you know, out here in Colorado, we can use a combination of. I mean, we get a lot of sun, so we can use sun with solar. But we also get a lot of wind in areas. I mean, a lot of very consistent. Tomorrow is going to be very windy, um, and so wind turbines could definitely be effective. So I just think it's cool. I just think it's like futuristic, man. Futuristic, man. Nope, can't stitch with that, can't stitch with that. Can I stitch with this? Oh, yes, I can. I'm getting a lot done, guys. I hope you're getting a lot done with what you're doing. I wasn't sure how much, how talkative I would be. It's been a very busy week. Well, it's been a very busy end of the week. And Friday was very stressful. And today was still stressful. And so... It's all good. It's all good. But I have you guys. I have the stitching. And I always have the stitching. No one can ever take my stitching away. But. Oof. There. Oof. Dot. But I think tonight. After I do this, I would really like to get going on Old World Map 2 or Boba Fett. I'm not sure, but I need to get a lot of the bigger projects started. Get them going. Get them rolling. Why does it look like I don't have any light? Let there be light. Sorry if the light's not as good. I, I seriously, like, I'm looking at um, mine or what I'm looking at, like not the camera. When I look at the camera, it looks darker than looking at, so I'm not sure why. I'm hoping it's gonna come out just as bright as what I see. Oops, snagorific. Go. Well, that is just not good. That This particular snag wants to just stay put. Aha! Oop, no, I just broke something. All right. I'm going to leave this mess back here, guys, at least for now, okay? Because I can't get that snag to come loose. And because I can't, I'm just going to keep moving, and I'm going to end up hiding that behind, okay? Doesn't matter. Everything in the front looks perfect. But what it does is it saves you time. And it limits your frustrations. When I finally let go of being upset about things snagging, 
Oh, that was a good day. That was a good day because then I just basically just kind of re relaxed about a lot of things. I'm going to come down here and do this one. There's Fargo barking. Somebody's probably walking in the park. It's uh, crazy. Probably need me to come down and be the disciplinarian here shortly. Somebody's got to be out there. Let's see. The fish are doing pretty well. Um, the snails that I've transplanted seem to be doing better, doing their jobs. But um, the, I think the betta died. Did I tell you guys that the other day? I haven't seen the betta in forever. And, I mean, if he dies, I think those snails would, like, eat him up, like, in a heartbeat. And I, I'm pretty sure he's dead because I haven't seen him. So I need to check water quality in that tank. I need to change the water. There's so many snails in there. It might have changed the everything. So I, I still that's still going to be my betta tank. I, I got you know I'll go and rescue another betta. I like to say rescue because I hate to see those bettas in those tiny little cups. And granted, yes, they can live in the tiny little cups, but that's not. That's not how they're, you know, that's not their life, you know, that's not cool. So I'll go and find one somewhere. The problem is, and I understand this, that if I go and get one, then somebody else is just going to order another one to be, to replace it. I understand that, but at least I can for that, for that little, little bit, I can get that, um, hold on, I'm trying to figure out what I just did here. Okay, I can at least, you know, make one better ha happy with that. So hopefully we can you know, do that. It won't be too big of a deal. Too big of a deal. just about finished with what I needed to do so far well with the video and everything but you can see we don't have that much more to go guys I did this and then this in the last couple of days but I'm still gonna do more it's not like I'll put this up once the video is done and not touch this again I'm definitely going to get in here and continue working on this some more just to get more stuff done that would be good and, uh, but I think I am going to end this now, uh, and, oh, load this up. If I can load it up tonight, that would be great. Otherwise, it'll be out first thing Sunday morning, um, for those of you guys who are in the States and, um, elsewhere, obviously, in the world. But thanks for hanging out with me again and watching the video. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for all your comments and your likes and, you know, and, and it's all awesome. I really enjoy it. It keeps me so motivated, and it's so much fun to do this. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next weekly video, the next weekly update. You'll get to see the, um, the finished piece and see what kind of progress we've made on everything else. So until then, Ronnie Rowe says, see you later, guys.